they had come through the gate and they had like pieces of a throne. They were putting this throne together over the city of Chicago. Hallelujah. And I know that represents an authority of God's kingdom coming into our city. Hallelujah. Years and years ago, at one of the victory clubs that we did in the Rockwell Projects on the west side, a girl named Angela Stevens, who's like 11 years old, and she was not a church girl, did not know um, spiritual symbolism of any kind. And this is like, maybe we were like three works, three weeks into this club, meeting up on the 11th floor in, in this particular building. And all we were really taught was a little bit about salvation. You know, we sang a few salvation songs and had played a few games and thought a little bit about salvation. And this is an 11-year-old girl. And she came, Brother Steve, Brother Steve, I had a vision of Jesus. And I said, yeah, you know what? Said, you really? Yeah, he, he was standing up over Chicago with a pitcher of water. And he was pouring it, and the water just kept coming and coming and coming and kept filled the alley, filled the streets, filled everything. What does that mean? <laughs> Hallelujah. What does it mean, you all? Hallelujah. Praise God. Jesus is coming to pour out his spirit. Hallelujah. And that spirit, that outpouring of the Holy Spirit, is a, an outpouring that's going to bring transformation to our city. Hallelujah. And I just want to say, too, we should really be encouraged. And don't be surprised in some of y'all's prayer meeting if you start becoming aware that angels are here. Amen. Hallelujah. Don't be surprised if people start seeing them, start having them. That's very New Testament. You know, we've, we've kind of gotten out of the habit, right? But you reread the book of Acts and see how many times they've come in. We are underperforming in that area. Hallelujah. Uh, and we started experiencing this ourselves, the times that we've been in prayer and stuff like that. But there was this little boy during that 50 days of prayer at one of the services, and it wasn't a very well-attended service, but the people that were there had come to pray. And this little boy said to one of the team members, he said, wow, this room is sure getting crowded. It's like a little six-year-old boy. What do you mean? Do you know what I'm saying? All the angels come in. Hallelujah. And so there, there has been, uh, angels have already always been here, but we're like, this is like, it's been like a, a release of the army of heaven Amen. coming in to do yeah. what needs to be done in support of what we're supposed to be doing. Because yeah. we've got some things to do. They're not going to do all the work, but they got some stuff in the heavenlies to do while we take care of some other stuff that we're supposed to do. Yeah. Praise God. So while we thank you for the time that we're in, and you opened up with this is the day. Uh, I have been asked. I want to. I want us to turn to Psalm 118 and just read there. Because that same week, where we had prayed at the portage, two days later was National Day of Prayer, and uh, I have been asked by a group to help lead prayer at a place called the Chicago Temple. And I'm glad on the previous year National Day of Prayer, I had taken my team. We spent the first half of the day praying around downtown Chicago, and we spent this evening praying around the west side. So I'm glad we have been to Chicago Temple. I knew what a demonic place it was. <laughs> it was horrible, you know, just, you know, but I, I knew how to go ready to even be able to do anything in that atmosphere. And so we, we have been asked to pray, and it was a good group. It wasn't a bad group that asked us, but they had convened a prayer service there. Now, how many have ever been in Chicago Temple? It's right, right downtown. Harvey United Methodist Church. They got all kind of accolades to every kind of religious spirit you can name around that place. Terrible. But thank God for Jesus. Amen. And that morning, you know, I, I had prepared. I knew what the Lord wanted me to, to pray. And I'd like wait before him and ask him to like give me how to start. And he gave me Psalm 118, verse 25, which says, This is the day the Lord has made. Well, not 25. Verse 24, This is the day the Lord has made. We'll rejoice and be glad in it. And I'm like, going, I didn't really even know where it was found when he gave it. I had to look it up later. I actually got to the service to look it up. And I'm like, Well, that's a lame scripture, Lord. For <laughs> an event like this, this is the day the Lord. And we sing that little chorus, right? And, okay, I can see the day of the Lord. Okay, we can make it work, God. It fits. Day of the Lord for Chicago. Okay, we make it work. But I got into the service, and I said, you know, I need to really just read this. 
And the Lord took me into Psalm 118, and I, I, I went back into like the early part of the psalm, and I'd like to begin just reading around verse 5 with you right now. Because I believe this voices the uh, voice of the church in Chicago. If we've been, you know, we've been keeping up a pretty good. I don't want to say, I don't want to say front. We're not faking it, but we've been, we've been putting our best foot forward. Let's put it like that. But we know we've been losing the battle in the streets. We know we've been losing the battle for the generation. Yeah. And we know the glory of God hasn't been here like it's supposed to be. We, we, we know it, but we've been like, okay, we'll just soldier on. Yeah. Hallelujah. We're putting our best foot forward. But I believe there was something here that articulated the, the, the voice of the Lord and, and the voice of the church and, and, and God doing something. So in verse 5, I called on the Lord in distress. Yes, Lord. Let's, uh, let's be honest. We've been in a place of distress. Yes, Lord. The Lord answered me. This is this, is this year that we are in now. The Lord answered me and set me in a broad place. The Lord is on my side. Yes, he is. yes we have fallen way short as the church of Jesus Christ. We've got yes. a lot of faults and a lot of failures and a lot of mess-ups and a lot of things that we've done wrong and have been repenting of and need to repent of some more. Man, but, but in all of that, God hasn't given up on his people. Amen. The Lord is on my side and I will not fear. Yes. What can man do to me? For the Lord is for me among those who help me. Yes. Therefore, I will see my desire on those who hate me. Yes, it is better to trust in the Lord. Now, this is a big switch here because we in Chicago, even in the church, we tend to put a lot of confidence in him. But it is better to trust in the Lord than to put confidence in man. It is better to trust in the Lord than to put confidence in Rahm Emanuel. I mean, princes. Hallelujah. All nations surrounded me. Yes. This is the church. I believe that this was, we, when the Lord brought me to this, I believe this was kind of like the cry of the church, if we could hear it in the spirit. But in the name of the Lord, I will destroy them. Yes, they surrounded me. Yes, and they surrounded me. Yes, they surrounded me. But in the name of the Lord, I will destroy them. They surrounded me like bees. They were quenched like a fire of thorns. For in the name of the Lord, I will destroy them. You push me violently. The enemy has warred against the purposes of God for our nation and for our city. Yeah. And it's been a violent push. And there are, I want to touch on some of these straw men in just a few minutes. But this has been a serious, concentrated, organized, strategic effort of the devil to come against a generation. And he's been aiming for now. And to come against our nation. Yeah. You push me violently that I might fall. But the Lord helped me. Yes. The yes. Lord is my strength and yes. song. Yes. And has become my salvation. Yes. The voice of rejoicing and salvation is in the tents of the righteous. The right hand of the Lord does valiantly. Hallelujah. The right hand of the Lord is exalted. The right hand of the Lord does valiantly. I will not die. The purposes of God will not be extinguished. They will not die. I will not die, but live and declare the works of the Lord. This generation, according to you over here, because you're part of that generation, is going to declare the works of the Lord. Your generation is not going to die. The purposes of God are not going to be extinguished. They are not going to be an army for the Antichrist. Hallelujah. The Lord has chastened me severely. We needed it, amen? Yeah. But he has not given me over to death. Amen. Open to me. Now, can you imagine how verse 19 and 20 hit me? Because just two days before, we've been hearing God say he was ready to come into Chicago. Two days before, we've been, we were in a place where there, that declaration was made. Chicago is Emmanuel's gate. Imanach Nuel is the Hebrew. God is with us. Hallelujah. Yes. Open to me the gates of righteousness. I will go through them and I will praise the Lord. This is the gate of the Lord, yes, Lord. Through which the righteous shall enter. I will praise you for you have answered me and become my salvation. The stone which the builders rejected. And I believe there are communities around this region 
that, that line up with this. That, that's the stone the builders reject. That's the stone they like, you know, let's try to gentrify them out of here. Hallelujah. That, that's, that's, let's go around them. <laughs> Hallelujah. The stone that the builders rejected has become the chief cornerstone. This was the Lord's doing. It's marvelous in our eyes. This is the day the Lord has made. Yes. Now that verse just, I'm like, oh, wow. Hallelujah. It's not a lame verse. <laughs> Hallelujah. This is the day the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Yeah. Save now, I pray, O Lord. O oh Lord, I pray, send now prosperity. Yeah. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. That's Emmanuel. That's Jesus. Hallelujah. We have blessed you from the house of the Lord. God is the Lord. He has given us light. By the sacrifice, that's our lives, living sacrifice. We're cords to the horn of the altar. Hallelujah. We're in this time. We're in this time. What does Jesus come to do? There's four things, and I'm going to leave these with you. I've got to do them briefly. But I want you to, I want us to pray. I'm going to spend a little more time on the first one and just mention the other three. The very first one might be the hardest one to swallow. He's coming to reform his church. Most of us think of Reformation as a historical event that happened 495 years ago uh, when Martin Luther nailed the theses to the door of the church at Wittenberg. Then it was on, right? Things began to change. The word began to be re elevated in the church. But really, if we can look, at the last 500 years, we have been in Reformation. If you study church history, which is a wonderful subject, uh, the enemy had basically snuffed the church out around the world because we were prominent. We, the church, were prominent on every continent yeah. back in the early centuries. But the enemy attacked, he attacked. We, we got lukewarm is what happened. And we stop taking the glory of God to the end of the world. And we stop getting ready for the return of Jesus. And the enemy took advantage of our lukewarmness. He began to push, push, push. Hallelujah. He pushed in Africa. He pushed in Asia. He pushed in Europe. Hallelujah. He dwindled us, dwindled us, dwindled us down until there were just, uh, just a smattering of people left by the time the Reformation began to come. But thank God. God is who he is. We know we're more than a smattering now. Amen. Hallelujah. And we have pushed back on every continent. Hallelujah. Thank God for that. Hallelujah. But the enemy is still doing his end game as well. Reformation of the church. Final phase. We must become what was born of Pentecost. We must become what defeated Rome in those early centuries. And I'm going to share, I'm going to leave a couple of references with you and let's get a pray into these. Of course, most of us are very familiar with, with these. Uh, Matthew 5, verse 14 through 16, Jesus talks about us being a city on a hill, a light to the world. Amen? I love Hebrews 12, 22. It talks about, you, it says, you have, you have come to Zion, to the city of the living God. It just really goes into that. And when you read that scripture, it opens up from a New Testament doorway all, everything that the Old Testament says about Zion. So read Hebrews 12, 22, and then read Isaiah 6. Now I'm read some of those songs where it talks about Zion. And you'll see a scenario that's coming. I don't know how God's going to get it done, but you'll see a scenario that's coming where nations will serve Zion, bring their wealth to Zion. That's coming. We don't know how God's going to do it um, prophetically. We don't know. It can't be too long from now. Hallelujah. But that day is coming. Amen. Amen. When we become what the Lord told us to be, and that's going to be a global movement, that God, for some reason, why did God choose Chicago for it to be a flashpoint for that kind of movement? I don't know. Maybe heaven knows. We don't know. But God chose Chicago to be a flashpoint for reformation that's going to become. And this is what Alexander Dowie saw over 100 years ago. He saw that it would become, would start in Chicago and that the world, all the churches throughout the world would catch on. Now, when God does what he does in Chicago, we're on the national stage. Yeah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Revelations chapter 21, verse 9 and 10 says, Come, let me show you the bride, the Lamb's wife. And so when we read that, what does he see? I see a city. I mean, I see the heavenly Jerusalem coming down. 
Hallelujah. And most of us have been sort of trained to think about that as being a future experience when we all get to heaven. But the reality of it is, and I, I want to put a couple more references with that just so you can pray and navigate this and consider this carefully. Uh, Revelations 19.7 says the bride is a big celebration. Hallelujah, everybody's rejoicing. Why? Because the bride made herself ready. So it's not just something God is doing in heaven, but there's something that we're supposed to do on earth. And so if we look in the mirror, how I many of the Bible is our mirror? The Word of God is our mirror, but it's not like earthly mirrors. It shows us what we're supposed to look like. And so we look in the mirror and it says, you're a city. I mean, the Muslims don't have a hard time. They've copied us, really. And they've tried to become a city within the city. Now, a lot of other groups have done it, too. Gangs, and it's really in the DNA of Chicago. Uh, one of the guys as part of a, a group that we're convening in the city used to be a, uh, a prince in the El Rukas. And we call him Mufti or something like that. And he was in charge of organizing three cities. And he's now a pastor. Hallelujah. Love the Lord. Been totally delivered. Okay? None of that. Is, I mean, he's just the humblest guy. You know, in his early 40s. Hallelujah. Walking with Jesus. Hallelujah. Wonderful. Wonderful guy. But what the Lord, we had a conversation. I believe the Lord had been speaking to me, and I just wanted to test it out on him. I said, well, gangs in Chicago were different from the other cities, weren't they? Because in Chicago, that, that DNA, they, in Chicago, they, they just naturally gravitated to trying to form city within the city. And so they, and indeed, the Vice Lords and the GDs and the, the uh, El Rukins and, and all of them, that, that's just kind of what they did. And the other cities basically just were criminal organizations. Hallelujah. 